Hey, good morning, uh, Carolina Weather Authority. Meteorologist Joshua Nagelberg here. Um, we issued an article last night uh, detailing the threat for a major hurricane in the Carolinas, and uh, Mike did a great job putting that together. He and I collaborate along with Max quite a bit here about our thoughts of the weather, so we all are on the same page. And um, the article that we issued last night, by the way, um, this is not meant to scare or get clickbait or to hype things up. This is what our thinking is, and I'm actually going to give you guys some detail as to why that is the case. And to do us a favor real quick, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Carolina Weather Authority, and uh, that way you can have the latest here. Um, I will be going into some detail about our forecast. Uh, again, uh, here's our page, carolinawxauthority.com. Here is the article that was posted by Mike last night, Hurricane Season. 2020 could spell trouble for Carolina coast. Please uh, read that. And again, this is not a, an alarmist post. This is what we are believing as forecasters. We have no problem sticking our neck out there a little bit more and explaining why we're doing what we're doing. So let me show you guys here uh, what, what we're thinking. And again, um, you know, it's actually been quite some time before a major, uh, since a major hurricane has actually made landfall in the Carolinas. You have to go all the way back to 1996 with Hurricane Fran coming up in this direction. Um, so it's uh, been 24 years, and uh, several others have hit as well. Uh, Hugo in 1989. Um, since then, we've had some notable storms to affect the <clears throat> excuse me, notable storms to affect the Carolinas, such as Matthew and Florence. Uh, but both of these storms were Category One when they came up. Same for Dorian last year, came up through Ocracoke as a Category 1. However, those storms were major hurricanes and very large storms that had happened to weaken before landfall, which is honestly a blessing between you and me, but um, as large as the storms were and as slow moving as they were, they still created a lot of problems with flooding, uh, with coastal storm damage, so it doesn't take a major hurricane to do a lot of damage. But this year, and, you know, it is 2020 and things are already kind of wild and crazy for us. Uh, we do believe that um, there is a heightened risk for that. And I'm going to go into our forecast once again. 15 to 20 named storms, and I would not be surprised if we made it past 20. Um, the record holder is the year 2025. That was the year with Katrina, Rita, Wilma. Um, <laughs> if we get to that again this year, let's be honest, I would not be surprised one bit. But good luck trying to forecast that. Um, 8 to 12 hurricanes. Um, so far we're at zero, but it, hey, it's the second week of June. Give it some time. Four to seven major hurricanes. And um, this would put us in the top 10 um, annually in, in, in Atlantic season history, if that were the case. The risk areas are in the yellow and red, with the yellow being areas that I do think will be affected this year, but the red areas being ones that are kind of under the gun. We often see storms um, early in the season kind of dictate where they will again be active later this year. And unfortunately for us, uh, this area has been active and this area has been active. So guess what? Um, we are predicting um, more storms to affect South Florida, more storms to affect the Central Gulf Coast, the um, greater Antilles of the Caribbean, and the Carolina coastline. And there's a threat for some weather up here as well, farther up the East Coast, as well as in the Western Gulf. Um, you know, there, there may be some inconsequential storms down in here, and we'll probably see a lot of development in the next couple of months across the Cape Verdes and the, and the tropical alley is what we call it. And don't be shocked if there's a couple of minor, you know, no-name kind of storms that do get a name. Does that make sense? I guess it doesn't. <laughs> uh, in June, this is from AccuWeather.com, um, where Mike and I met. We used to work there. Um, in June, we don't see a lot of activity out here, nothing too organized. You know, maybe there's a couple of yellow hatched areas from the Hurricane Center, uh, but we do have a lot of dry air coming off of Africa for the next month or two. A lot of um, westerlies, which create wind shear, which um, keep storms from forming um, their central thunderstorms and keep them from organizing, <coughs> excuse me, and um, across the northern Gulf and around here we often have strong wind shear, which honestly we really haven't had a lot of. Um, so we're already seeing what could be um, a place at the table for less wind shear than average up in here, which I know you don't want to hear. Um, this is from tropicaltidbits.com. We love this site, and thanks, Levi, for putting these out there. Um, <clears throat> these show um, typically what our anomaly is in our typical upper air pattern at 500 millibars. 
So what this means is that we're expecting higher than average pressure at 500 millibars. And um, these areas here indicate ridges of high pressure while these are troughs. Now tropical systems will tend to form under ridges and get steered by them and then look for a weakness between ridges. So our weakness is a trough here. It kind of attracts them because systems tend to flow um, around uh, counterclockwise regions of high pressure and then they look for that weakness. So what we've seen over the last several years are these strong areas of high pressure um, end up being a little bit stronger um, and then slow storms down and then they have to find a weakness that maybe is, is really not that strong. I guess that makes sense, a not that strong weakness. Uh, but you can see here for August, we're looking at what could be a, a path for storms to come up the East Coast. Uh, now September is kind of the time frame that we would expect that to happen more. And here you go. So if this um, is the average for the month, that means there could be weaknesses here, could be here, uh, could even be down in here. So um, it's, it's game on for the East Coast and for the Gulf Coast states. High pressure right here um, is what's expected. Again, if this model ends up being 400 miles too far east, look out Loretta. That means the southeast coast could be under the gun. Um, but that's what we're uh, seeing on the, on the seasonal models. And then October, less likely that we have strong storms coming up here. Um, but if we've got a ridge of high pressure over here, the Western Caribbean gets active. All it takes is one strong trough dropping down to push that up through Florida and up the east coast, a la Matthew, a la um, Dorian, a la Michael. Um, so that's something we have to keep a close eye on. Precipitation forecast for uh, July, August, and September looks quite wet in the areas we've targeted right here, uh, as well as north of Bermuda. And uh, the African wave train is expected to be pretty active in here. A lot of that's attributed to what's um, called a La Nina, which is forming in the South Pacific. It cools the waters down in here, and you can see that's going to keep things dry. Um, south of the equator, here and south of the equator. Uh, but because of the La Nina, we are expecting, uh, on average, more rising air. And that's why we're expecting more precipitation than average. Now, it could be wrong. We could uh, see a, a La Nada, which is kind of a, a neutral, or we could uh, try to get back to an El Nino, but I think um, the consensus is that that doesn't happen. For the month of July, we're looking quite wet here. That goes with our summer forecast, but look how active things are down here over the intertropical convergence zone. Um, this is indicating some Saharan um, desert air, which is going to keep things dry, but by the time things get across to the to near the islands, uh, could be active. And I know we've got maybe what's being shown as maybe a Bermuda Ridge right here, so maybe the uh, Gulf and Florida are more active, but it's active here because we're expecting recurving storms. So that's something to keep an eye on. Um, if we go ahead one month to August when storms become more active, unfortunately it looks wetter than average in here, which goes with our forecast. And this is indicating what could be some rapid fire development in August, maybe several storms coming up in here. Here's the recurve, by the way, but watch out in this area just in case. September, again showing high pressure offshore. Guess what? This is a forecast. What if what if one of these storms comes up the southeast coast? Then we get a a wet a wet month and maybe a very wet month. I mean, this was kind of what we saw with Florence a few years back. Uh, the the uh, models were forecasting dryness over here. Um, and remember, Florence was actually expected to come up in here and recurve, but high pressure off the northeast coast happened to be a little stronger. And then we had that westward turn and then the hit. And then everything slowed down with high pressure here, stalling things. The weakness was just not really there. Um, so we had five days of rain. By the way, that's never happened. So climate models are based on climatology. Guess what? We've been rewriting the record books in the last few years. We've had climate change. I don't think that's a surprise to anybody. So just because the model says this doesn't mean it, it's going to be set in stone. And then October, you know, by then, hopefully we're quieting down. Um, we're going to watch this area, of course, for some late season action. And November, down here it's busy, but high pressure takes over the southeast. That's pretty typical. So a lot less likely by then. <clears throat> Sorry, got a frog in my throat. Uh, sea surface temperatures over the peak months of the hurricane season are forecast to remain warm. We had a warm winter, and guess what? It's going to stay warm, despite maybe what's going on onshore with these troughs bringing us some cooler weather and wet weather. So that doesn't help either. In fact, here's the month of July. It's quite warm over the Gulf Stream compared to average. 
and the Gulf and Caribbean are warm as well. So all it takes is uh, the right storm pattern, uh, the right amount of development to feed in off of warm waters and you get those major hurricanes. Here's August, here's September, here's October, November, I mean you, you get the point. It's I mean, maybe you have one major hurricane that cools off for a week behind it because of the upwelling, but then we get back to active weather. So um, that's why we're forecasting what we are, guys. There's a lot of science behind it. It's not hype. Make sure that you CYA with CWA and keep tuned for the hurricane season uh, for what we're expecting to be quite active. And um, yes, this is, this is sticking our necks out, but we're expecting a major hurricane at some point this season. All right, everyone. Thanks for your time. Talk soon.